to Sri Abdul Razak sir. Sir, please. Thank you, Magna, Ms. Magna Suresh, for the kind welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Am, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Yes, sir. Carry on. Good afternoon to the, all the participants to the, this webinar from the various geographies. I hope everybody is taking precaution and remaining safe during these challenging times. Probably this is the first time in the history that the world has come to a standstill, but by something we can't even see. However, we will come out of this crisis as well. Indeed, this webinar series is an example of that. Actually, such crisis, uh, uh, such a progressive uh, initiative by this ICFSA, Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association, I must thank ICFSA for transforming this pandemic as an opportunity to us by this platform. So this is an extraordinary or a historic opportunity that ICFSA and COVID-19 in particular has provided us. I, re I really thank ICFSA and collaborating institutes for making this webinar happen and being me on this platform. This webinar was inaugurated on 26th May 2020. Probably this would be the last one in this series. And I have a to congratulations to Dr. Shiva and his team for planning this event. And I was impressed by this kind of work ICFSA was doing in the area of forensic science. This is a platform to interact by the forensic experts of today and to train the forensic experts of tomorrow. In this series, we have fantastic speakers from the uh, very beginning series onwards. And I wish to inform all the participants here that the speakers are very best people in the country that has worked in the respective areas. Today, we are going to have a lecture on HPTNC and its forensic application. And it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers to the speaker today, Mr. Akshay Charagonakar, Director Angrom Enterprises Limited in Mumbai. Mr. Akshay is an entrepreneur and as a, and more interestingly, a chemist by qualification who, who, be, who will better understand our concerns and our difficulties and our requirements. That means the forensic fraternity people. And he did, he did his graduation in chemistry from our, the well-known prestigious well-known institute in the RIT, USA. And he is doing his MSc in the Mumbai University. And he formerly he was associated with the Viker Corporation as an R&D chemist and now is heading the Anchorom Limited. And his vast experience in the HPTNC and introducing effective training and educational programs in the field of HPTNC. Uh, that means uh, that are applicable in the forensic field and also in the pharma and also in the food field will be utilized by us by in this program. A few of his, his achievements are RIT's Presidential Award and RIT Dean's Merit List, etc. He has delivered so many lectures on HPTLC all over the country. He has co-authored a poster on HPTLC MS in the 63rd American Society for Mass Spectroscopy Spectrometry Conference held in United States in 2000 during 2015. You know, Anchorom India Private Limited is one of the best in best oldest and best companies in the analytical instrument supply. They identified their niche in the TLC, thin layer chromatography, which is later became HPTLC. And was specialist in HPTLC since their inception from 1978. That means they are dedicated to the technique of HPTLC and they are ably supported 
by their principal schemat is to survive. As a voluntary corporate uh, social responsibility, they are offering free training on SPTLC and support researchers with the subsidized analysis in the India specific application research lab established in 1989. SPTLC is one of the widely applied method for the analysis of forensic toxicology, drugs, explosives, etc. And it is the extension or a modern version of TLC, Tinder Chromatography, where the principles are same, but the practice is it is fully automated. And which it is a most, it is the fastest, simplest, most economical, flexible, and visible technique, which can analyze in parallel more than 100 compounds or 100 samples, and which is risk free and which is. Uh, equally suitable for the qualitative and quantitative analysis. Today's analytical world, HPTLC it plays an important role that not in compete with the HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography, but it is supplementary to that or a complementary technique. HPTLC produces visible chromatogram, complex information about the compound that we are analyzing and multiple samples we can see simultaneously we can analyze multiple samples so that the reference and the uh, sample or the, that is sample to be analyzed can be compared and HPA TLC offers a better resolution or high resolution and lower limit of detection LODs and just I would like to stop here because we need more from more on SPTLC from Achai, and we are need to hear from Achai. I once again thank you all, and I once again welcome uh, on behalf of the ICFC, Achai. I request Mr. Achai to take over. Achai, please. I'm not audible. Hello. Uh, you're audible, no, sir. No, Chai is not audible, I think. Akshay, sir? Akshay, sir, you yeah. Chai, you are not audible. Okay. All the participants, kindly turn off your video and okay. mute your audio. So, uh, is my voice audible now? Yes, okay. sir, you're ready. Thank you very much, sir, for those kind words of introduction. And uh, without any further ado, let me start uh, by welcoming everybody to this uh, event. We will be speaking about HPTLC in forensic science. I thank you all for joining us. I will turn on my presentation mode. Now, uh, before I start, I would just like to inform you all that uh, two of my laboratory colleagues from Ankrom's laboratory, Dr. Saikat Malik and Mr. Shahrukh Bharucha are in this call or in this uh, webinar rather. And you are welcome to ask any questions whenever they strike you by typing in the chat box. They will answer your questions live and uh, we will continue. So you are all welcome to ask your questions whenever they strike. So now let me begin by my presentation. So is my screen visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, oh, okay, sir. great. So I would like to welcome you all again to the webinar hosted by the Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association. And we at Ankrom are playing a role by the technical side. I would like to get into the actual presentation itself. The presentation is HPTLC and Forensic Science. So we will break the presentation into two parts. First, we will talk about HPTLC. What are the differences between TLC and HPTLC? We will then take a look at some of the instrumentation available for HPTLC. And in the second part, we will look at the applications of HPTLC with some special focus on the hyphenated techniques such as HPTLC coupled with mass spectrometry, HPTLC coupled with bioautography. And then we shall look at examples of work done in HPTLC in the forensic field. Uh, being that this is a forensic audience, I have cut out most of the other examples and we will focus on the 
forensic field. Uh, we have formatted this content specially for the Google webinar format uh, because generally PowerPoints are made to be shown in front of a large audience on a projector screen. So, but I know many of you are watching this video presentation on a uh, phone screen. So we have specially formatted our content for the phone. So I hope that it will be clear to you all. So and Chrome, whatever technology I'm going to talk about now in my presentation is present already in our application center in Mumbai. We can train up to 20 trainees at once. We have 15 analysts working only in the field of HPTLC. So if I show you any technique or any application that is of interest to you as a uh, it could you could be from a government FSL or you could be a student or whatever your field of interest is. If I show you a, an application or an instrument which you like and you would like to use, you are welcome to contact us. This lab is for your use. Uh, of course, we are under lockdown right now, so our lab is closed. But as soon as we are allowed to open it, uh, I would love to welcome you all. So please keep an eye out. Whatever you wish to do any work in HPTLC, you are welcome to contact us. Anchrome also has a YouTube channel. If you search YouTube for Anchrome, uh, you will get our channel. And I urge you all to go there because we have made several tutorial videos uh, for how to use HPTLC systems and how to do HPTLC analysis. We have put them on there. They are available for all of you free of cost. So if it is of interest to you, you're welcome to go to our YouTube channel as well. And then finally, Anchrome has been offering free training to on HPTLC to any government lab employee or pharma company or postgraduate student or teacher for the last 20 years. The training will be arranged in Mumbai as per mutual convenience. We will issue a certificate and the training will be completely hands on. So please uh, make a note of this email address and phone number on the screen as uh, in front of you. You are welcome to get in touch with us right after the lockdown. We would love to welcome you to our new application center. So HPTLC stands for high performance thin layer chromatography. The most important word is chromatography. HPTLC is a chromatographic technique just like HPLC, just like GC. Except the crucial difference is in HPLC or in GC, we are doing the work on columns, where in HPTLC, we are doing work on TLC or HPTLC plates. The definition of chromatography is the same for all of these, whether it be HPTLC, HPLC or GC. Chromatography is the science of separation of mixtures. So a mixture could be anything. It could be a forensic sample, for example, a narcotic powder captured at the airport, or it could be a viscera sample from a, from a police case, or it could be a medicine, or it could be a herbal medicine, anything. We want to separate the mixture into its components. And once we separate the mixture into its components, we want to identify what is in my mixture we want to quantify what is the quantity of each one of these components in my mixture. And sometimes we want to do micro preparative analysis. That is to say that we want to isolate a pure quantity of some of the fraction. So let's say you're working on a plant and there is a particular bioactive fraction that you want to isolate in a pure format to send for either for biological testing or for structural elucidation. Uh, and you need five to 10 milligrams of pure material that we call micro preparative analysis within identification. Also, there are two types. One is comparative identification and one is absolute identification. Comparative identification means any technique where we have a standard and we have a sample next to each other in the in the instrument and we compare the signal that we get from the standard to the signal that you get from the component of your mixture. If the signals are the same, then we say, yes, it is the same material. That is a comparative identification. But there are some techniques which are absolute identification also, which in many cases do not require a standard, either because there is already a library present uh, uh, for which we can interpret the results using the library, or because in case of NMR or IR, there are rules for interpretation, where from the signal itself, we can judge what the particular component is. So that's comparative versus absolute identification. Comparative identification type take example is, of course, UVVIS where you have a, you get a UV spectrum of your standard. And if the UV spectrum of your sample matches the standard, then you say, yes, this is the same thing. Yeah, fair in absolute, there is NMR, where there is a rule for interpretation of the splitting and you can get an idea of the structure of your compound that way. Now, many of you must have done TLC in your various laboratory or during your education. This is what you see right now on the, your screen is what a typical analysis of 
TLC used to look like, if I am not wrong. So let's see the features of TLC analysis and then we will compare it to HPTLC. So first of all, when you did TLC in your lab, you drew a line with a pencil like this at the bottom where you are going to apply the plate, uh, apply the sample. Then you took a capillary and you filled the sample in the capillary and you touched the capillary to the TLC plate forming a round spot like this. Then the entire plate was kept in a beaker containing the mobile phase. You had to stand there until the mobile phase via capillary action reached the application, uh, excuse me, the final position on the top. And then if you wanted to visualize, either you had to go to the UV cabinet or what you can see what is happening in this case is that the entire plate is kept in an iodine chamber. And iodine is used to derivatize. Iodine uh, has the property of... Sorry to sorry to interrupt, sir. Your screen is not visible. Oh, it's not visible? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, because... Uh, somebody, somebody shared their screen. Oh, I see. I see. So okay. sorry. No problem, madam. Let me get back to that. Uh, let me start presenting my screen again. Uh, sorry for the interruption, everybody. I, I think I'm back. Uh, am I back online? Oh, so yeah, as I was uh, saying, yes, sir. Yo. Uh, so madam, sir, I again. No, oh, again. Sir, again. So I have no way of knowing when this happens. So please uh, keep yeah, informing sure. me. Okay, let me. My presentation. Yeah, please. Okay. I request we... other participants to stop sharing their screen. Kindly turn off your video, please. Participants, you will be removed from the session okay. if Are you start sharing yes. your screen. Please stick on to the guidelines. Okay, sir. Please continue. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, sir and madam. Okay, so then the entire plate was kept in a tank containing iodine, which has the property of sublimation, which in this case, or a, the vapors of iodine make color change. So this is what a TLC plate typically used to look like. Now, in this, first of all, you can see there's almost no separation between any of these components here. This is a marker. There is no way to tell if this marker is present in the rest of the samples or not. Now, let us take the same sample, Asian ginseng, which is a Chinese herb, and let us see the same sample under HPTLC conditions. Now you can see a dramatic difference. You can not only see excellent separation between all the components, as you can see here, and there are one, two, three, four, five standards, each one of which are at such a distinct RF that I can very, very clearly see them and distinguish them. So this is TLC versus HPTLC. It used to be TLC, now we are doing HPTLC. And you can see the huge difference in the same sample. The same sample has been giving you some excellent quality now. In the old days, TLC used to be done on plates which were 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. If you refer to any old methods or any old pharmacopoeial monographs, you will see that HPTLC was always done on 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter plates. Now the problem with this is that it takes a long time to finish developing a single plate. It takes more than 90 minutes. Now, in HPTLC, we have shrunk the plates down. We have miniaturized. We have, while keeping the resolution, we are now doing analysis on 20 centimeter by 10 centimeter plates only, which can be developed in less than 30 minutes. So we can get a huge time saving by switching to HPTLC versus TLC. Now, on your screens, you can see an, an a data sheet about TLC versus HPTLC. Of course, we are not going to go through the whole sheet. We will focus only on the three areas which are marked by the arrows. Primary focus of TLC used to be on simplicity and low cost. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting some interference. Uh, hello? Yes, may I continue? Uh, yes, sir. Please ask him to mute, sir. Otherwise, uh, there will be disturbance. Dr. Saikas, please mute your audio okay so let me continue the primary focus of tlc used to be on simplicity yes, yes. and low cost we wanted to do quick analysis on our desktop and within five ten minutes we wanted to get our preliminary data and when you had something that was uh, failing a test in tlc then you would go on to the hplc in your laboratory or some other technique for the final results that was what the primary focus on tlc used to be but now the primary focus of HPTLC is on reproducibility and separation power. And we want to give analytical results directly from HPTLC and not only preliminary results. 
the data structure in TLC used to be either you had photographs of the plate, which I showed you before, or very, very simple chromatograms. But in HP TLC, the instrumentation is so well developed that we want to give or we have the ability to give traceable digital images, which cannot be edited by anybody or densitometric scanning data, quantitative and qualitative which are qualified by a system suitability test. So TLC versus HP TLC is a difference of about 30 years. A long way has been traveled. Now let's take a look at the practice of HP TLC. One is we want to prepare the sample. Prepare the sample means simply that you need to make sure that whatever your target analyt is properly dissolved in a, a, a particular solvent that you have chosen and there are no particles in it. That's all that you need to worry about in HP TLC. In HPLC, you have to worry about the pH of the solvent. You have to worry if the particular uh, sample preparation solvent will damage your column and so on. HPTLC, the columns, which are the plates, are disposable. So therefore, we do not need to worry about what is the content of my particular. Is it very acidic? Is it very basic? Doesn't matter. So we prepare the sample. Then we apply the sample to the plate. Now in HPLC or GC, since there is a closed column, we call the application step injection because you are injecting your sample into the column. Whereas in HP TLC or TLC, we call it sample application because the column is basically a flat TLC plate and you are merely spraying your sample onto the plate by means of application. So this in this, this step is called application and not injection, but it is one and the same thing. Then we come to chromatographic development. Just like how in TLC, we used to keep the TLC plate in a beaker now we have several sophisticated ways of developing the plate that is allowing the mobile phase to travel up the TLC plate by means of capillary action. There is no pressure, there is no, no pump. It is simple capillary action which makes the mobile phase travel from the bottom of the plate to the development distance. Then visualization, which is something unique to HP TLC. That is when we take a high resolution photograph of the developed plates and all the separated components thereon. Then there is densitometric scanning. There is derivatization, which I will talk about in the next few slides and then followed by sometimes by densitometric scanning. Now, HP TLC consists of all well, HP TLC plates, proper instruments for all steps, a completely standardized methodology and a focus on validated methods, which are completely reproducible whether it be plate to plate in my own lab or day to day or lab to lab. So if I'm in a good mood, my results are good. If I'm in a bad mood, my results are not good. Or the results in your lab are good, but the results in a lab in Delhi are not good. These things should not happen. We should do such standardized analysis that if there is any difference in the results, that difference can only come from the difference in the sample itself. And not because I made a mistake or you made a mistake. So we want to use instruments which are not capable of making mistakes and we want to use a standardized methodology and validated methods. So HP TLC is the most simple, reliable and fast technique as Sir also said in his introduction. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, there is no possibility of contamination of the chromatograph. Why is that? Well, first of all, HP TLC plates, which are the stationary phase are disposable. After each experiment, you throw away that particular TLC or HP TLC plate and you take a fresh one out of the box. Whereas in HPLC, you have to worry about whether there is carryover from my previous sample, whether the column is properly cleaned or not. So there is no possibility of such a thing in HP TLC. Secondly, in HPLC, the solution containing your, the mobile phase containing your analyte of interest has to physically travel inside the detector. Whereas in HP TLC, the sample or the components of the sample are immobilized on the plate. And there is only a beam of radiation coming from the top of the densitometric scanning instrument falls on the plate. And then the reflectance of the beam is measured. The sample itself stays on the plate. It is never injected into the actual instrument. So neither can you worry about, neither do you have to worry about your stationary phase. Neither do you have to worry about overloading your instrument or your detector. There is no possibility of any contamination of the chromatogram. Then it is the simple and fastest technique. Why is that? Well, because first of all, each step of HP TLC, which I showed you before, has its own instrument. There is a separate instrument for application, separate instrument for development, 
separate instrument for visualization, separate instrument for scanning, separate instrument for derivatization. So many analysts can use the same machine at the same time. In our lab also, we have 14 analysts, but we have only one HPTLC system with two or three applicators. But you will never see anybody in our lab waiting for one instrument to become free, saying, oh my gosh, I, I, I have to wait for two hours because my colleague is using this instrument. No, with proper planning, many people can use the same system at the same time. Whereas in HPLC or GC, if I inject the sample from one side, I have to wait for the results to come out from the other side before anybody else can use that machine. Secondly, you can only do one sample at a time in any of these machines. In HPTLC, we can apply up to 15 tracks on a single plate. Now, not all tracks are samples. Of course, you need standards, you need a system suitability. So you can do between 10 and 12 samples in parallel at the same time, if they're of the same type, of course. So it can be a very, very simple, very, very fast technique. Then there is very, very low running cost and maintenance because HPTLC does not use high temperature, high pressure anywhere in the system. So there is no possibility of pumps and oil and leakage and seals and gaskets. None of those things are a feature of HPTLC. So you will see all over India in many forensic labs itself, uh, CAMAG HPTLC systems are running for 15 years, 20 years because there is no contamination and they're very robust machines which require very low cost and maintenance. Running cost is also low because for two reasons, one of which is that we do 12 samples in only 35 to 40 ml of mobile phase. Secondly, the mobile phase that we have, the solvents that we use to make our mobile phase, that itself can be of a cheap grade of solvent, AR or GR grade. We do not need HPLC grade or higher because in HPTLC, the plate is the container of the sample and the solution is dried off. Whereas in any other technique, the, 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 the mobile phase is the integral part of the sample. So we use cheap solvent and we use less of it. So that leads to very low running costs. Then there is double confirmation of results. That is to say that the plate itself is a type of result. Let's say you are doing a reaction monitoring. A plus B equals C or A plus B makes the product C. So if you start seeing uh, extra zones in your plate, then you know that some side chains are being formed. So just looking at the plate itself is giving you data. And of course, there is printed results available from the instrumentation. But just the plate itself is a result. So there is double confirmation of results. Now, let us take a look at applicability of HPTLC, especially for forensic labs. Now, I have been to many, many forensic labs across the country over the last 12 years. And I know that there are certain problems that are faced unique to these labs. One is that, uh, what I, from what I have seen, is that uh, there is funding available to purchase instrumentation, but there may not be funding available to properly maintain it. So you need a robust, strong instrument which does not require frequent maintenance. Secondly, in the type of forensic samples that are received, especially viscera or stomach wash or some other uh, samples like that are very, very matrix heavy. So you need a machine which is robust, which will not get damaged or clogged, which will let you prepare the sample in a simple way. And the third thing that we have seen especially is that due to the transfers of the people, so two or three people might be an expert in one lab in HPTLC. Next year, they get transferred. New people come in. Of course, the people who come in are very, very intelligent, creative. They want to learn, but they need a way to learn the new instrument that is in front of them. So these are some of the problems that we have seen. And let's see how HPTLC can solve these problems. First of all, the hardware is modular. That is to say, each instrument is separate. So multiple analysts can work in the same system in parallel. There is ease to upgrade. The same software controls all the instruments. So later on, an instrument can be added. Then the software keeps all of your data in a SQL database. That means that it, the, all the data is tagged properly and it can be brought up at any time. So you don't have to worry what I did last year. How can I find it? Data is not stored as individual data files, but it is stored as inside the database. So if you have a sample, uh, let's say that it came from Cochin in December, you search for Cochin December, you will get the sample you did during that time, for example. Being a database software, that also means each analyst's work is password protected. I already talked about minimal use of solvents, disposable plates. And as I said, in forensic labs, especially due to the government nature of the government, people get transferred. So you need a distributor who will provide proper solid support 
to the new people who come in to get expertise on that particular instrument. So, Anchor has been offering solid support since '78. We have a network of engineers, we have a laboratory, and we offer free training to any laboratory, whether they are our customer or not. But especially for our customers, where our people will come to your lab at your convenience, they will train you, and they will go. Even after 10 years of purchasing the machine, we will always come and train you, so that the machine will stay in action for 15, 20 years also. So. Now I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about the regulatory status of HPTLC. What are the various international regulations regarding HPTLC? Well, since August 2015, HPTLC has become an official part of the US. Is of course, as you know, a very very reputed analytical body, and their standards are enforced even in uh, countries where the US does not operate. Their agencies are their regulations are respected. <clears throat> the chapter is called HPTLC for the identification of materials of botanical origin. Now, of course, this is a forensic uh, topic, but the standardized methodology is the same. Doesn't matter if the sample is forensic or if it is not. The standardization of the methodology will help everybody in every field. So, the U.S. Pharmacopeia has the chapter. The European Pharmacopeia is harmonized with the U.S.P. The Indian Pharmacopeia just last year published an updated HPTLC chapter. It is not completely harmonized with the U.S. Pharmacopeia, but things are going. And just now, WHO guidelines were also published, which state the use of HPTLC. Now, again, I'm telling you, this HPTLC chapter is for botanical materials, not directly applicable to uh, the forensic field. But we will talk about the method which has been standardized, which will help every analyst, regardless of their field. So these are the USP HPTLC parameters. They have standardized every step of the way. They have told you how much distance to leave from the left side of the plate before applying your first sample. They have told you how much distance to leave or from the bottom of the plate before applying your sample. They have specified what should be the length of the band of the sample. They have specified how much gap to leave between two samples. How much the development distance should be. What should be the height of the mobile phase in the tank? Every single thing is specified by them. They have said that you have to always apply bands and not round spots, and they have told specifically that all the analysis should be done at 33% relative humidity. 33% relative humidity is chosen by them for being a neutral humidity, which does not affect any analysis dramatically. But HPTLC being an open technique. The humidity in the summer is different. The humidity in the rainy season is different. In the winter, it is quite dry. So the humidity in the air of our laboratory, even if it is air conditioned, keeps on changing. So they have specified all work to be done at 33% RH all year round. Whether it is in your lab or my lab or a lab in Switzerland or a lab in USA, all analysis to be done at 33%. There is an instrument available to do that, but there is also a very quick and Cheap non-instrumental way to get 33% humidity also, which I will share with you in the next slides. So this is the USP parameter, and all the analysis that I am going to show you in the next few slides is done with USP parameters only. Now this is a consequence of following the USP parameters completely. This is a comparison of multiple samples of curcuma, which is of course turmeric, aldi, done across a period of many months in a laboratory. You can see that all the samples look pretty much the same, even though one work was done by one analyst, one work was done by another analyst, one work was done in March, one was done in May, June, July. Doesn't matter, because the method is standardized. We can get expect to get standardized results from the samples. Secondly, this all these samples next to each other that you see here are not put together in Photoshop. This is an output directly from the software. Because as you remember, I mentioned that all the data is kept inside a SQL database. So I simply had to go and search for curcuma. All the work that was ever done in curcuma in my laboratory showed up, and it is showed like this. Now let's take a look at how this standardized procedure can be used. This is a mix. This is a way I am showing you how to distinguish between two subspecies of a plant. One is curcuma longa, which is our haldi used in Ayurveda. And this is another curcuma subspecies called curcuma aromatica. So this is an adulterant. We don't want this in our sample. We want only pure curcuma longa. Now let's see 
on the left this track here track number 1 is 100% curcuma longa you can see it has three special compounds which we call curcuminoids and pay particular attention to this curcuminoid the lower one on this side this track here is the curcuma xanthorrhiza that is the adulterant you can see that this particular curcuminoid is completely absent this is this desmethoxy curcumin by the way this is completely absent in the adulterant material and this mysterious purple band that you see here is present only in the adulterant and never present in the actual haldi happens when we make a 50 50 mixture which is this track here 50 50 mixture of pure haldi and adulterated haldi so you can see that a curcuminoid band is also present and this purple band is also present and what happens when there is 10% adulteration you can see that a very very faint purple band is here and a very very strong curcuminoid band is here because 90% material is pure 10% is the adulterant now we can depend on these results only because we are following a completely standardized methodology otherwise you know these bands would be so close to each other they would not be properly resolved this that there would be a hundred things that we could point out wrong and we could not rely on the results but with the standardized methodology we can always rely on these results now i am keen to come to the application part because that is where the most discussion usually happens so i will spend some time on the instrumentation then we will move on to the hypernation and the application <clears throat> these are this is a schematic diagram of a hptlc system you can see right at the heart of the system i have put this is the heart of the system you can see i have put a this software the, the system manager software which is the single software to control all these devices now why is that because in this day and age the software is 75% importance and the hardware is only 25% importance to be very frank with you the software has so many jobs it has to control all the instruments it has to gather data from all the instruments it has to keep that data safe from tampering because you are all forensic scientists if anybody takes any what we can say if raises any doubts on the integrity of your data it will be not a very good uh, what we can say it will not be a good situation so your data must be impeccable nobody should be able to raise a finger so the data must be locked up tightly and then the instrument also has to generate a report in a human readable format so the software has many roles and then of course we have the sample application devices chromatogram development scanning that we will talk about one by one <clears throat> this is what a complete system for hptlc looks like we have the applicator followed by development with 33% humidity automatic derivatization densitometry a instrument for taking photographs of the plate and the modern hyphenated tlc ms so from the densitometer we get these peaks just like hplc peaks or gc peaks where the area under the curve or the height of the peak corresponds directly to the concentration of the particular substance in your sample from the photo documentation unit we get high resolution high dynamic range photographs of the plate and from the tlc ms we get the mass spectrum of the sample so in this way the complete system from hp tlc gives you multiple sets of data from the same sample now you are among the first audiences where i am talking about the brand new system which is the hp tlc pro which is a completely automated touch free hp tlc system for doing up to 75 samples at the same time touchless so here also there are various instruments but the instrument all look the same from outside these are actually five separate instruments and there is a way for moving the tlc plate from one instrument to the other built into a machine by means of a conveyor belt system so let's take a look at what these instruments are first is the application the sample is applied to the plate then the plate automatically moves to the development unit then we have a tlc ms unit we have a derivatization unit and finally we have a detector unit so this is how these machines are all connected together now these machines are already present in ancrom's laboratory in mumbai you are all welcome to come over and take a look at the latest generation of hp tlc machines now let me go to a small video of these machines in action
Akshay, I think your yes. screen is uh, stuck. Please step into that one. Okay, Akshay. okay. Uh, uh, yeah, my whole computer is there. Just one moment, sir. Yeah, no problem. You can take your time. Yeah. So it seems to me I'm having a hard time playing the video. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, so we are back. Uh, sorry for the interruption. And uh, we'll move on to the next slide before, uh, since there's some problem with playing videos, it seems to me. Uh, I've never had this problem before, so I'm a little perplexed myself. No worries, sir. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that every time I uh, go to that slide, I'm going to close the entire slideshow and come back. Sorry. Okay, sir. Okay, so we are back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now uh, back to where we were talking about the software. Uh, I've told you all the things that uh, that are in the software. Now, one of the things I did not talk about is that the software is on a client server architecture. That means that all the data is stored in one of the computers in the lab and the whole lab is networked so that you can use any of the instruments while sitting at any computer inside your laboratory. And you can see the data of any instrument. Now, for example, in our lab, I, my cabin is not in the office, uh, in the lab. It is a little bit away from the lab. But sitting in my own office, I can see all the work being done in the lab. Now, for example, the director of a forensic lab can see all the work from the laboratory sitting in their own office. Or if there is an academic institution, the guide of a research project student can see the work from the guide's office, not going to the laboratory. So that is the benefit of a client server architecture. Then there is automatic backup and restore built into the system. That is to say that every evening the backup can be taken at 8 p.m. after the lab closes uh, or every Sunday or whatever you wish you can set so that there is no threat to your data. In the field of data analysis, it is said that two is one and one is none. If you have only one copy of your data sitting on your computer, then that data is at enormous risk because the hard disk can crash anytime. There can be a virus attack, whatever. So always keep more than one copy of your data. So there is an automatic backup tool to facilitate this. Then there is an online method library, which has about 130 methods right now, but more are being added in the software itself. There is no separate subscription for it. There is no separate yearly fee that you have to pay. When you buy the basic version of the software, every single user gets access to this library. And more and more methods are being added to this library every day. So that means that your software gets more and more useful to you over time. And there is a online licensing process. What does that mean? It means that you do not need to keep the original CD of the software that came with the machine. Because that is one of the problems we have seen in laboratories also. That the machine lasts for 10, 12 years. Who will keep track of a single CD or DVD for 12 years? It is impossible. And then uh, the after six years, the hard disk crashes. The director of the institute calls us. And then our engineer says, sir, where is the original CD? Or madam, I need the original CD. It is not available because that was six years ago. So those are common. Sir, I think your uh, screen is, uh, please share your screen. I think it's out. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that. I don't know how that. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm back, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so now the, now the licensing process is online. So you don't have to keep any track of any software. It is our responsibility to make sure that your license is in the cloud. So anytime, five years from now, 10 years from now, you buy a new computer or you add a new computer to your network, you don't need to do anything. We will come there, automatically install it because the process has moved to the cloud and not to a physical CD-based format, which it used to be. 
so this is what is in the latest vision cats software that i am going to show you some now hp tlc sample preparation now let us like take a look at each one of the steps of the instrumentation one by one and then we'll move on to the hyphenation so in in the old days hp tlc used to be or sample preparation used to be very complicated it used to you used to have liquid liquid extractions and soxlet extraction overnight and all that stuff now the usp has said that the for most of the analysis it is sufficient to take a 100 mg of the sample 100 mg of the sample it could be anything it could be a suspected narcotic or viscera stomach wall whatever other sample we dissolve 100 mg of the sample in methanol sonicate for 15 minutes centrifuge to make sure that the particles settle down and we directly apply the supernatant to the plate so it if this can be so this is not of course an iron rule but most of the time this works so this has simplified the process so much that in 15 minutes we can have so many samples ready very simple very low cost quick then it's time to apply the sample to the plate there are two instruments available to do that one is the semi automatic applicator which is here and the fully automatic applicator which is here the they both give the same quality of results except in this linomat instrument you have to do a little bit more work to get the sample into the syringe of the instrument that you can see here whereas the auto sampler as the name suggests is automatic there is a space for 66 vials you keep your vials in the vial rack the same vials as hplc vials the same size and you tell the sample from vial a1 apply 2 microliters from vial a2 apply 3 microliters and so on and the sample will automatically apply the plate now they both spray the sample by means of nitrogen remember that we do not want to make contact with the stationary phase the way we used to do in tlc where the capillary used to touch the surface of the stationary phase we don't want to do that what this machine or both of these machines do is that they use a needle if the next slide the video works i will show you the machine in action if it doesn't work then my words will have to suffice the machine applies the sample to the plate without the needle touching the surface of the stationary phase by means of nitrogen spraying and the samples are applied as sharp rectangular bands and not as round spots so now i have this video i i'm trying to play it if it doesn't work then we'll skip past it yeah we are facing the same problem so i'm going to skip past all the videos in this presentation i oh are we good can can you see the video because i can see it playing on my screen uh oh, so it's not playing okay yeah okay let me let me skip out of it yes yeah, so after the session uh if you're okay we can try playing it again yeah yeah okay fine so let's move on so let's see what happens when we apply a round spot versus a sharp rectangular band now when we apply a round spot what happens is that the spot that forms onto the plate by when the capillary touches the plate it forms a very very concentrated zone in the center of the application position and uh, and those of you who are chemists you know that there is a thing called a diffusion gradient which states that a substance tends to spread out in a, a from a area of high concentration to a area of low concentration so when there is a area of high concentration right where the capillary touched the stationary phase it leads to spread spraying or spreading out in all directions of that particular sample whereas in a band that is sprayed on and the entire surface of the band has the same concentration which tends to show less of this so you can see here in this track versus this track the same concentration of sample is applied you can see here we have a good baseline separation between the red and the blue dyes whereas here the red and the blue dyes have bled into each other this is because as i told you because the concentration effects are playing uh, havoc in contact application with a round spot versus spray on technique of a rectangular band now let's take a look at what are the various ways where we can spray a sample onto the plate 
now because the hptlc plate is disposable you can be as an as a as a scientist you can be bold in how you apply your sample to the plate the first way is of course quantitative analysis where we apply known quantities of your standard five or six times and then you apply your sample and then you make a curve from the response of the sample and then of the standard excuse me and then you see where your sample fits on the curve this is beer law beer lambert's law all of you know this this is quantitative analysis but there are other techniques also which you can do so let's take a look at how you can use hptlc plates to clean your sample directly on the plate what we call in situ cleanup now assume that you have a particular sample which has a very very high matrix which you want to remove so either you can do a sample preparation step by means of a uh, of an spe cartridge or something else or you can try to do sample cleanup on the plate itself so let's assume that the matrix that you don't want is very very fatty it's a oily matrix which you want to remove so you will apply your sample not at the bottom of the plate which we did here in this case but in the middle of the plate so you apply your sample in the middle of the plate then you use a mobile phase which will remove only the material which you don't want so for example in the case of a oily matrix that you want to remove you will use something very very non polar like n hexane or something like that to get rid of only the material of your uh, matrix so you will develop in n hexane from here to here then all of the unwanted matrix will be concentrated in this corner of the plate then you will take a pair of scissors you will simply cut off this much of the plate therefore getting rid of your matrix then you will turn the plate around 180 degrees and develop in this direction that's why we applied the sample in the center of the plate to leave room for development so in this way you have saved a lot of time and cost on cleaning the sample now of course this in situ cleanup only works in very specific cases i don't want to give you the wrong impression that this can be used all the time it, it is used only in specific cases where the matrix is amenable to be, being removed by means of a mobile phase which will not affect your analyte of interest this does not happen all the time but when it does happen this is a very very space or time saving technique then i told you before micro preparative isolation let's say that you have something that you suspect to be toxic in a particular plant you want to isolate 10 mg of that particular compound to send for analysis outside by means of nmr or whatever other thing so we want to apply a large volume of the sample so that i can isolate a large mass of the particular sample of my interest so instead of applying small small 8 mm long bands i will apply the entire plate as one single band that that is to say i will apply the whole plate as a 180 mm long band so that i can apply a huge volume of the sample without overloading the plate in any area secondly the plates which we use for qualitative and quantitative analysis they generally have a silica gel layer thickness of 200 or 250 microns but merck also makes special micro preparative plates which have a layer thickness of 1000 or even 2000 microns so you can apply a huge volume of your sample to get a large quantity of the particular fraction of your interest out this is micro preparative isolation and then sometimes we want to spray the same area of the plate with more than one thing let's say you want to make a mixture of a and b so instead of physically mixing a and b in a vial and then applying the mixture you can first spray a then on top of that at the same location spray b or sometimes we want to spike our compound or our sample with a particular compound or we want to derivatize only a certain area of the plate in all of these cases superimposition uh, is useful let's take a look at micro preparative isolation so you can see i instead of a small band which is you can see here this is what we generally apply i have applied this entire long band like this from here to here and if this is my area of interest this this material that i have isolated here i will simply take a pair of scissors i will cut off this much area of the plate i will put that into a test tube or i will use the new tlc ms instrument for it and i will suddenly get one or two milligrams of the compound directly from the plate if i can make this work then you don't need to go for 
either flash chromatography or supercritical fluid extraction chromatography, any other technique, if you can get this to work, this is what we call preparative or micro preparative TLC. So now you have applied your sample to the plate. Now we want to make sure that we can now develop the plate. There are three ways to develop the plate. One is a glass chamber called the twin trough chamber, which is the most commonly used. Then there is an automatic development chamber. And we have a gradient elution chamber, which uses a gradient of mobile phase, which changes the polarity of the mobile phase during development. Just like you may have been using gradient HPLC with a binary or quaternary system. HPTLC can also be done using a gradient. Now let's take a look at the twin trough chamber, which is the glass chamber with the bottom of the chamber divided into two parts. Let's see why we do that. So this is the most common chamber which you will encounter in any HPTLC laboratory. The chamber looks like this from the side and there is a bottom of the chamber into part one and part two. Now why is that? Let's see why. So what happens is when you pour your mobile phase into any tank, the mobile phase which are generally volatile organic uh, solvents they start evaporating and soon you have a vapor of the mobile phase in the tank and the liquid after about 10 15 20 minutes the mobile phase liquid and vapor they come into equilibrium the concentration of the vapor in the air of the tank is no longer changing so to get to this equilibrium point quickly we use something called a twin trough chamber and why do we need to do the analysis at the equilibrium point because HPTLC is an open technique. When you put your plate into the tank, the air in the tank touches the surface of the plate. So we want that to be always saturated with the mobile phase vapor so that you get reproducibility between runs. So what we do is that we put a filter paper on one side of the tank. When we pour the mobile phase into the tank, we pour it from the top of the filter paper so that the whole filter paper gets wet on the way down which gives a massive surface area for evaporation. Then we wait for 20 minutes and then we tilt the chamber by 45 degrees so that half of the mobile phase goes from the filter paper side to the other side, which now gives us the space for development. And then after 20 minutes, you put your plate in the other side of the chamber. So this is why we use a twin trough chamber to do development. <clears throat> there is another instrument available to do automatic development, which we call the Automatic Chromatogram Development Unit, ADC2. It uses the same glass chamber that I showed you before, except it is attached to a machine which does two, three things. It automatically monitors how far your mobile phase is reached on the plate. It automatically controls the humidity in the chamber to 33% always. And it also dries the plate before giving you the uh, final plate. So it does humidity control, it does layer equilibration, and it is automatic. And it does not require any intervention from your side. When we did TLC in our laboratory, we had to mark the development distance 7 cm, 8 cm with a pencil and stand there next to the beaker until the mobile phase reached that. Am I right? All of you must have experienced that during your TLC days. Now this machine does that automatically. You can see in fact that there is a red laser uh, maybe I can mark it out here. This is the tracker. This tells the machine exactly where the solvent front is. I have, an, I have a video of that machine, but uh, we already know what happens to videos. So I'm going to skip past it. So then we come to the third way of developing. One was the glass chamber, which is used in the majority of situations. The second one is the automatic chamber, which controls the humidity. The third one is the gradient development. Now, what does gradient mean? It means that we can change the polarity of the mobile phase during development in steps. In HPLC, this happens without steps. It happens or within the actual development run itself. In HPTLC, we don't have a way of doing that. So we put in a mobile phase of a particular polarity. It is allowed to develop up to a certain development distance. Then that entire mobile phase is removed from the tank. The tank is dried. 
the second mobile phase comes in with a different polarity it is allowed to go farther up the plate then that is also removed then the third mobile phase comes in which is allowed to go even further and in this way we can do development with up to 25 steps so that is what we call gradient hptlc gradient hptlc is generally run with a very high polar mobile phase to begin with which moves to medium polarity mobile phases steps and finally the last few steps are of non polar nature now uh, i have not enough time to cover gradient development also as a entire that is a separate topic by itself so we'll move on so now you have applied your sample to the plate now we want to take a look at all the data we can gather from the plate the first and foremost thing is that we should have a uv chamber or uv cabinet with a high resolution high quality camera to take photographs of the plate so this unit does that it's called a visualizer unit it it has a what is called a industrial camera on top if you remove the camera housing you will not see any buttons any focusing nothing it's a industrial camera built by baumer optic of germany specially for camag to make take photos of hptlc plates it takes photos under normal white light which we see in our daily life under 254 nanometer uh, short wave uv and 366 nanometer long wave uv it also does one thing which is called high dynamic range imaging which many of you must have seen in your phones it says hdr mode on or sometimes it says hdr mode off so what is high dynamic range imaging and what why is it useful in hptlc photography well first of all hptlc plates have a wide variety of how bright the particular zones are now for example this zone that i have marked here is very very bright whereas this zone is very very light so if i take a single exposure and, and i optimize the exposure for this bright spot then this dark spot will not become visible at all or if i take a photo to make the dark spot visible this bright spot will become completely overexposed like if you have your face and the sun in a photograph if your face is properly exposed then the whole sky becomes white or if you expose so that the sun in the photograph is properly exposed then your own face comes out dark you must all have experienced this so for that we have a high dynamic range imaging system now take a look at this photograph for example it is a photograph of a of a gorge on a river so it has the sun also in the image and it has the dark inside of the cave or the gorge also so you can see if i take the sun properly then the gorge details are not visible or if i want the details from the actual the the stone here the sun has become completely overexposed so instead of that what this machine does is that it takes three photos of the same plate at various different exposures and digitally mixes the three photos together to give one perfect image this is an example of high dynamic range imaging and this is why we use high dynamic range imaging in hptlc to get the proper exposure for all the zones be they very dark or be they very bright i hope this is clear to everyone so this is step 1 of the data gathering process we take a photograph of the plate the next step is the densitometer which is the heart of the information gathering step which gives both the uv spectrum of each molecule on your plate and it gives you a absorbance reading that is to say the peaks which give you a calibration curve that you see here it gives you peaks for quantification hptlc is a fully quantitative technique all the quantification can be properly validated with a proper well established lod loq and so on this is how the densitometer works it's a brief schematic for those of who you are curious there are three lamps in the instrument the machine chooses the proper lamp which puts its wavelength into the all its output into the monochromator which selects a particular wavelength to go through there is a half silvered mirror which we also call a beam splitter half of the incoming radiation from the monochromator goes to a reference photomultiplier and half goes on to the actual plate and each zone absorbs or reflects whatever you put on the plate and a reference uh, or a measuring photomultiplier measures the diffuse reflectance so half of the energy went into the reference and the energy left over after absorption by the sample 
it came to the reference or it came to the measuring photo multiplier so in this way by subtracting the value of the reference minus the measurement you know what was absorbed by the sample this is how the monochromator works it can put any wavelength from 190 to 900 nanometers on your plate it can do multiple readings from the same area of the plate for peak purity checks which are a major part of hplc also so these are what three uv spectra taken by the densitometer look like these are three apis not directly four and six samples but these are from 190 to 400 nanometers not all the way to 900 we call this zone or this region from 190 to 400 nanometer the fingerprint region because the readings after 400 nanometers are really not indicative of any particular molecule. So you can see that the software has told you three molecules and their spectra look completely different. That's what we are trying to show here. And sometimes when you get one area of the plate, you suspect that it is actually two separate molecules which are not separated. We can test for that also. We call that a peak purity test. So I don't have the time to get into peak purity right now, but we, if you wish, you can ask in the comment box and my colleagues will be happy to answer but we can definitely do peak purity also by means of hptlc now this is a forensic sample this is actually cannabis and we can quantify the thc which is the main psychoactive substance tetrahydrocannabinol in the material by the scanner 4 and we can take the uv spectra of the thc which is the tetrahydrocannabinol and the thc acid which is another derivative uh, in, in there, in the same uh, cannabis. And you can see the two spectra look completely different. So I wanted to put something of uh, forensic interest. So I chose cannabis, which we all know as charas and ganja and so on, which is present in the country. We can quantify these cannabinoids. As I told you, we make a calibration curve and we see where the sample lies on the curve itself. And using that, we can quantify both in this case we have quantified the thc also and its derivative thc acid also now sometimes what happens is that two molecules have the same color and they appear at the same rf value on the plate as you can see i have marked them here now using your eyes you can be fooled you can say yeah it looks the same they're both blue in color they both have the same rf value yeah they probably look the same they are the same molecule but when I took the spectra of these molecules, one spectrum looks like this and one spectrum looks like this. This shows you the difference between the spectra. The eyes can be fooled, but the instrumentation can never be fooled, is what we are trying to show here. So this is how we do densitometric scanning. Now, sometimes just developing the plate is not enough. You need to spray a particular chemical onto the plate to cause some kind of color change or to make an invisible molecule visible that we call derivatization either you can spray the plate with the derivatizing reagent or you can so as i was saying the post chromatographic derivatization is a way to add something to the plate which was not present before so either you can dip the entire plate in a reagent containing the bacteria uh, excuse me in a, the mobile uh, the derivatizing reagent or you can spray the entire uh, plate with this derivatizing reagent Um, sir, I think the video is stuck. You know, I, this is my sixth or seventh webinar of this week itself. This has never happened. I don't know what <laughs> keeps happening. Might be some technical issue. Yeah, it might, must be some update that happened yesterday or something. Yeah. So then that was derivatizing. And I'm sorry, I could not show you the video. So these are the regular standard HPTLC systems where you can apply the sample, develop the sample, get the information from the sample. Now, let me talk to you about the latest developments in this field, which we call hyphenated techniques. One is HPTLC MS, which is a way to get a mass spectrum of any molecule on the plate directly from the HPTLC plate without going for LCMS. 
So the machine that Chemex supplies does not come with any MS of its own. It is an interface between a TLC plate. It requires an HPLC MS already installed in your laboratory. Can be of any manufacturer, Shimadzu, Waters, Agilent, Thermo, AB Cyx, doesn't matter. But it has to be an H LCMS and not a GCMS. So the way the system works is that the system, one side of the system connects to an LC pump. The second side is connected directly to the mass spectrometer. And whatever is on the plate of interest that is of interest to you is injected into the instrument. So the way it works is that there is a <clears throat> what we call an elution head inside the HPTLC plate. Uh, inside the HPTLC MS interface, which has two capillaries. One capillary is for the incoming elution solvent from the plate, uh, from the LC uh, pump. And the second capillary is for the outgoing liquid that is containing the eluted material from your TLC plate. So the piston is lowered onto the TLC plate. It forms a seal. Then the liquid starts flowing through the LC pump. It goes through this incoming capillary. It dissolves whatever is in this area of interest and flows out and injected directly into the MS. There is a two micron filter at the outgoing side, which blocks any particles that were on your sample or in the TLC plate. And it blocks those particles from going into the MS. Only pure liquid goes through. Now the MS uh, thinks that the LC column is on the other side. Actually, we have bypassed the LC column and the TLC plate is on this side. But to keep up the same pressure, we need the LC pump, which you can see here. So this is the way this machine works. It connects to any existing LCMS and it sits in bypass mode until you want to use it, in which case you turn a lever on the machine and then the machine becomes active. In this way, we can send the sample directly from a TLC plate, inject it directly into the mass spectrometer. And this machine is the interface. It does not have any software of its own. Its only job is to pick up the sample and inject it into the mass. And the analysis is done using the mass spectrometer software. I have a video that in action, but I'm going to skip past it since uh, videos are not really uh, working today. <clears throat> then we come to an example of this kind of work. This is Tadala fill in Ayurvedic Rasayan. Ayurvedic Viagra sometimes contains real Viagra. This is a case brought to us by one of the FDA laboratories of the country, and they had caught this what was being called Ayurvedic Rasayan and we found traces of Tadalafil in there. Now just the spectrum of Tadalafil is of course we can get that but using TLC MS we are also able to get the actual mass of Tadalafil which is a analog of Sildenafil which is Viagra. So in this way using TLC MS we can double confirm the results or if you have a triple quad mass then we can even go for the detection or structural eluc elucidation of unknowns. When you have a single quad mass, generally we can only double confirm what we already exist, already suspect to exist. And for unknowns, we need a triple quad. So <clears throat> Ancrom and Shimadzu have a good partnership. Shimadzu also has a laboratory in Mumbai. Uh, and one of our TLC MS units is almost permanently stationed there. So we published this work together. It is characterization of quinones from uh, tectona grandis, which is teak. So the HPTLC part, you can see here, we separate these anthoquinones very nicely, was done at Ancrom, and the MS part and the structural elucidation part was done at Shimadzu. So in this way, we published this paper and we showed it at uh, ASMS USA. It was uh, quite well received. So that was TLC MS, which we can use to detect unknowns or we can use to, to double confirm something of interest to you. Now let's take a look at another type of hyphenation, which we call the bioluminizer bioactivity detector. Now this is <clears throat> something very, very uh, interesting just as a scientist, whether it is an analytical use of, of you, analytical use to you or not is a different question, but let's, it's a very innovative technique, which is why I decided to put it in here to share it with you all. So this is a bioactivity detector. It uses a bioluminescent bacterium called Vibrio fishery, which has three characteristics which make it very useful for our purpose. One is that this bacterium is completely harmless to humans. So we can handle it without any special biosafety equipment. Secondly, this bacteria is very, very delicate. It can be killed off by the slightest toxicity. 
whether it is organic toxicity from a toxic alkaloid or it could be a uh, something that is showing a antibiotic effect or it could be something that is inorganic a heavy metal can also kill this bacteria so this is the second point of this bacteria the third one and the most important one is that it is bioluminescent when there is a healthy colony of these bacteria they emit light so you can see how we can use this property in order to detect toxicity in our mixture by coating the entire plate in a bacteria solution and incubating that plate any area of the plate where the particular band there has toxicity will be killing that bacteria and will appear to be a dark zone because the bacteria there are dead they are no longer emitting light the rest of the plate still has the bacteria and they are still emitting light so it is bright and the dead zones are the toxic zones so let's see this machine how it works so this machine has a 16 bit cooled camera now of course these bacteria are not glowing like i what i have shown here as an example the bacteria are emitting a very very faint bioluminescence so we need to have a cooled camera which will remove any electronic noise because the bacteria are so faintly bioluminescent that the regular fluctuations in temperature of a room will destroy the signal add so much electronic short noise that we need to cool the camera with a peltier junction so let's take a look at aflatoxin b1 which is a fungal toxin put into samples of honey so we applied samples of honey down here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 samples down here and the standard of aflatoxin down here and develop the plate so you can see the aflatoxin showed up here and you can see exactly which samples of honey are contaminated with the aflatoxin and which samples of honey are not contaminated so in this way we can very quickly detect whether or not our substance is a poison or it is a uh, contaminated with anything of course seeing a dark spot will not give you information about what this material is it will only tell you that this material is toxic so we need to then go on to other techniques like tlc ms with a triple cord or some other technique nmr to get a idea of the structure of this molecule so remember this is only a screening method where you can screen a large number of let's say you are working on plant poisons so you can screen a large number of plant alkaloid to see exactly which one is toxic and you can see another interesting effect you can see at the bottom of the plate this area is much brighter than usual it's because honey has sugar which is left behind during this development process and the bacterial colony here has doubled in size or you know just i'm saying doubled but basically it has increased in size so it is more bright than the surroundings so this is showing the bio beneficial effects this is showing the bio harmful effects this is how we can do bioluminescence assays the same way we are done here this is a uh, sample of patulin which is another fungal toxin put into apple juice same effect we can see where patulin is toxic and we can see the sugar left behind in apple juice at the bottom of the plate so you can see if you are working on a on a forensic sample for example you can very quickly detect what is the source of poison and only go and analyze that particular zone of interest instead of having to go through an entire separate let's say that the sample shows five or six separate zones instead of analyzing all of those we can quickly detect exactly which one of those zones is showing toxicity and spend our energy analyzing only that so this is a bioluminizer assay uh, we can use it for more than just forensic applications of course we can use toxicity profiling of wastewater or pesticide residues or screening of a large number of foods for any kind of toxicity or any toxic residues left behind in soil as pollution control and so on so this is a bioluminizer assay now this is the only machine that i have shown you so far that is not present in encros laboratory uh, because we cannot handle bacteria where we are but other than that all the machine that i showed you before application tlc ms everything is in our laboratory so now we took a look at the instrumentation of hptlc we took a look at the hyphenation of hptlc now i have put together some examples of forensic applications which are not meant to go deep into any one application but to give you a brief overview of all the things that can be done in the forensic labs of this country hptlc is most popular in toxicology especially for the cases of organophosphate poisoning which is unfortunately a big problem in india because of farmer suicides 
and in the narcotics department both for the narcotics which are caught during shipment smuggling as well as narcotics from the uh, the blood of the suspects so this is a brand new method that i am going to show you it is a screening method for identification of forensic drugs it contains most of the most common narcotics uh, i'll read out the names here morphine clonazepam secobarbital alprazolam codeine dmt psilocin lsd mdma methamphetamine heroin and so on so all the major uh, classes of drugs which are uh, which are cannabis heroin cocaine barbiturates benzodiazepines uh, psychedelics the new synthetic designer drugs like mio mio all of these are covered by this particular single method it contains both the spectrum of each molecule as well as the mass spectrum of each molecule so we can do not only densitometry but also mass double confirmation so this is called the screening method it is published by chemag chemag is the manufacturer of all these machines in switzerland and they cover all of these then we have a hptlc spectrum library of forensic drugs available which have a lot more than just 26 there, there are about 700 drugs of forensic interest they are both narcotics as well as poisons and the unknowns can be matched to this library which we call the spectrum library of forensic drugs which is a package that is available so using this method we can do the separation of any of these molecules using the spectrum library we can identify all of these i don't know if it is visible on your screen but this is the spectrum of clonazepam alprazolam flunitrazepam these are all of the famous benzodiazepine that are in use this is secobarbital which is a barbiturate these are both delta 9 thc which is tetrahydrocannabinol and cbd which is cannabidiol both of these are from uh, marijuana and so on so most of the narcotics are covered here you can see morphine which is a painkiller codeine which is in cup syrups but which is abused as a opiate oxycodone which is another painkiller opiate all of these are covered <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of uh, disturbance all of a sudden. Yeah. Then this is an example of arson investigation. Now you know petrol has a reddish color. If you've seen petrol, that is not the natural color of petrol. It is put in there as a dye. So petrol has reddish color. Kerosene has bluish color. So we were able to isolate and quantify this particular dye from the ashes which are left behind after a fire, and it helped the authorities in the arson investigation. to prove that it was actually petrol which started the fire as the accelerant and not a natural fire then we can fingerprint ink dyes for document authentication and the chemag authorities work with the us secret service which is in charge of catching counterfeiters of us currency to make a vast library of inks and the fingerprints of various inks because you know inks that we use are not a single color or a single dye or a single pigment they generally a blend of different pigments to get the exact uh, hue of color that the manufacturer wants therefore they are subject to fingerprinting where we can get an idea of exactly what is the particular blend of pigments used to make up that particular ink which we can use for document authentication in the document authentication section of fsls then this is the quantification of alkaloids from opium now you know in india farmers are allowed to grow opium but they can only sell it to government government opium and alkaloid works which has two units in neemach and gazipur so the farmers are paid based on how much morphine their opium has the raw opium so we are able to quantify all the five psychoactive more alkaloids in opium not just morphine but also codeine thebane pepperine narcotin and so on these are antibiotic residues also can be pesticides aflatoxins which are a common cause of food borne poisoning narcotic drugs we can identify we as i told you we have a method we have several methods in fact actually covering the various classes of narcotics and some of this is new work not done in our laboratory this is a new approach for analysis of indian counterfeit currency by hptlc scanning and photo imaging so the scanning can be done of a of a because the densitometric scanner of the instrument is used 
or it is meant to take a flat HPTLC plate, a rupee note can also be put in there without any modification because it is about the same size and shape of a as a HPTLC plate. So it can be scanned directly. So we can get a difference between the authentic notes or the genuine notes versus the counterfeit notes. Then this is pralithrin, which is a a what is called a an anti-mosquito agent. And we can detect pralithrin is just an example, but we can detect this entire class of compounds, uh, which are I don't know if I'm audible. I think I am. Then pesticide residues. This is a drug, Acidrex, in both the tablet form as well as the urine form of the particular addict in question. Then a drug of abuse, which is in this case is carbamazepine, which is a, which is a muscle relaxant, but it's also used as a, a drug of abuse. We can detect that as well as quantify it. Now this work we did for a government lab. It is the identification and quantification of explosives covering RDX, TNT, K6, some of the research developed explosives. And this were, this, all this work was done for that particular laboratory. And we can get the exact signature of any particular uh, explosives or any particular brand of explosives and so on. Now, of course, as I want to make it clear that Ancrob is not qualified or equipped to handle any explosives. This work can only be done in conjunction with government laboratories, which have the authority to do that. We are only providing them with technical support. Then this is Mandrax, which was another drug of abuse, which was generally caught at airports and so on. Forensic drug screening, morphine in urine. So all this time we were talking about the narcotics caught at the airports, but now we're talking about actually screening the urine of a person to see if that person is taking morphine or not. So these were some of the narcotics and the explosive slide that I show you. Now this is comparison of sal is the most heavily is the most expensive spice in the world. So there is a lot of incentive to adulterate it. So using the fingerprinting technique, this one and two tracks are good saffron. Tracks number three and four are all fake saffron. And track number five shows the dyes which are generally put into fake saffron. To make it look when you put that fake saffron into milk it makes it look authentic it gives that milk that yellow color which you expect from saffron so this way we can detect adulteration of first i showed you spices the second one is adulteration of herbal formulations remember i showed you the herbal viagra present in the real viagra this is a corticosteroid which are the steroidal in anti-inflammatories which are sometimes put into herbal painkillers so we can cover the major, all the major corticosteroids, prednisolone, prednisone, betamethasone, dexamethasone, hydrocortisone. And we can catch anybody adulterating herbal formulations with steroids, which are APIs, pharmaceutical ingredients, which are not supposed to be put into herbal formulations. Then we can do pesticide residues. Pesticide residues, not just in the foods, but also from the viscera or from the uh, or any other stomach uh, wash or any other uh, fluid from the forensic samples. Band colors is another one. Band, we showed you color analysis for document authentication, but the same principle can be used for colors which are put into foods. For example, chili powder has often put, uh, you can often see red color in chili powder. We can catch that. Honey is often adulterated. We can catch exactly who's putting fake sugar into honey to make a fake honey. We can catch other ways of doing unscrupulous activities. And uh, I, as I told you, we are not going too deep into any one of these examples. I just want to give you a broad overview of where all in, H, uh, in the forensic field HPTLC is used. It is used heavily in toxicology heavily in narcotics beginning to be used in other areas also but you can see that you can buy very very sophisticated ultra this that instruments but in forensic field one one thing is i know that forensic scientists have a lot of pressure on them lot of cases so you need a machine which is quick which can do multiple samples in parallel secondly uh, being that the samples have a lot of 
what we call matrix load being from dead bodies and so on that the machine that you use has to be robust also you should not be that you, it is a very ultra super duper this and that but it doesn't last for more than 8 to 10 months then where is the fun in using that so a machine should be fit for the purpose just looking at the sensitivity and this and that will not be of use if the machine will not last for you know one decade and use the public's money to the proper amount of time that it should be used for so hptlc can do all of these things in the forensic field argimon in mustard oil is a so sometimes mustard oil has uh, oil of this mexican poppy argimon mexicana which has a toxic alkaloid called sanguinarin and suddenly you hear about uh, suddenly you hear about a large number of cases of uh, of ascending paralysis in small children in one area then there is a big police investigation and it is generally found out that yes a particular sample of contaminated mustard oil reached that area and that was contaminated with this argimon mexicana which led to the paralysis of those children and just i just wanted to show you this work this is done in ancrum's laboratory we have made fingerprints of amul butter versus margarine versus what is called dal or vanaspati ghee which is a hydrogenated vegetable fat and we can easily catch who exactly is putting real butter as they claim or who is actually putting margarine which is cheaper or who is actually putting vanaspati which is the cheapest and the worst for health into their products we can catch them doing that so just briefly speaking about ancrum scientific endeavors there is a hptlc symposium every year and every year it is in a three year cycle one year it is in europe the next year it is in usa and the next year it is in asia so last year it was in bangkok and i am happy to inform you that uh, whenever an indian author's paper is accepted at these symposiums for either a oral talk or a presentation ancrum sponsors their entire registration fees in some cases we also sponsor other things like flights or hotels or something like that but the main sponsorship that we offer is the registration fees and every year about 40 to 45 indian scientists are present at these symposia last year it was in bangkok and i am happy to inform you that the indian poster won the gold medal the gold prize at the poster competition it was by yugandhara patil who is a student of dr professor sunita shailajan madam of ruya college in mumbai the year before that this symposium was in berlin in europe as i told you it's on a cycle in europe and at that point uh, dr vandana madam from sihagad institute pune vandana gavande madam she won the most promising researcher award which came with a scholarship of 2000 euros to be spent by her in any research field of her choice for whatever she wants so every year this symposium takes place we are very happy my whole i am there at the symposium i am a scientist myself my entire team is there this year the symposium was supposed to be in europe in ljubljana but unfortunately due to the covid epidemic it has been postponed to next year so i urge all of you if you are going to do work in hptlc you are welcome to apply to this and you are welcome if you get selected we will sponsor your registration fees which are generally 3 or 400 euros per head then there is a award called the hp dr pd seti memorial award in hptlc which is instituted by ancrum every year we give out five main awards and 20 certificates of merit to the promising winners of this award i urge all of you also to send your papers to us for that award the award is judged by an independent jury of three scientists ancrum has no say in who gets the award there is no nothing like it is our good customer then they get an award no they get the award solely on the basis of scientific merit so every year we get about 150 papers for this award i urge you all to submit your paper also to us if you want to know how you can submit your paper just type in the chat box and my colleagues will be happy to to get uh, in touch with you now my last slide we at ancrum we want to be your analytical partner not just the supplier of instrument that we supply the goods and we leave no we know that to keep a machine running it is not enough to supply a good machine it is you have to supply a good machine you have to give excellent service and you have to provide excellent training as after sales support 
because people keep on changing new methods keep on coming in so our aim is always to keep you on top of the hptlc field so we want to keep your instrument running for decades due to our service and focus on the customer we are technologists not traders we don't do anything else except hptlc for the last 41 years and we want to be the best in the world at hptlc and we want india to be the best in the world at hptlc so i want to thank you all for your time and attention i would like to thank the organizers for giving me a chance and the last thing i would like to leave you with is that please do contact us do visit our laboratory for training and for analysis of your samples we will be very happy to take it up uh, we are a completely research oriented company we always want new samples to come in uh, so with that i end my talk thank you all very much thank you so much sir now we have time for so questions i request you to stay online for few more minutes sure sure absolutely my colleagues are also in yeah, here so dr saikat um, uh, mr bharucha so they will also be joining us in case any questions are uh, have arisen so uh, before winding up the session if you have any queries please comment it in the chat box so i request you like if you can clear any of the queries yeah i mean the queries are just flowing in aren't they <laughs> okay <laughs> So uh, there are a lot. Yeah, Doctor Saikat, would you like to jump in here? Yes, sir. Because sir, uh, I, have... because I am not able to keep track of all the flowing chats. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So mostly we have answered most of the question. Few uh, questions were like like uh, meta amphines and all analysis. So we have uh, already showed him the presentation in which we have covered that methodologies are there for screening, uh, uh, which are there on the particular topic. uh so likewise um so one uh, of the questions that are come in can you send me the powerpoint of this presentation by dr garima madam uh, yes we will send you the powerpoint of this presentation uh, if i if you could tell me madam the organizer how we can uh, send it uh, we will be happy to share it akshay uh, we will be yes, sharing sir. the um, those who have participated i will be sharing the details with you so okay. you can send the details to okay them. sure sir thank you very much sir so uh, dr saikat would you like to answer this question asked by uh, dr diksha sharma that the principle of chromatography involves mobile phase uh, how to make a sample immobile if it is in mobile phase? oh i see so this needs to be rephrased yeah yeah so we had one question in which they wanted to know hyphenation how can it help them so currently the hyphenation which we have with our system it is an hptlc ms hyphenation and that is an online hyphenation so directly from the plate your sample is going into the mass and you get uh, the exact uh, mass identification of the molecule if you want to practice other hyphenations commonly uh, practiced hyphenations are autobiography uh, experiments where you have uh, your plate uh, which is uh, placed in and on that you put your um, uh, media having the inoculum of the bacteria and you keep it for some standing time and after a certain time you observe the zone of inhibitions and that is how you can find out about the antimicrobial effect similarly there are enzymatic and and, and this is also which are there but you require a very good uh, microbial biological lab and apart from that you, what you can do is further with ir and nmr you can utilize by uh, offline collecting uh, the samples of uh, desired interest into vials and you can subject it to further uh another uh, analysis techniques like uh, ir and nmr which will uh, combining with mass will give you the entire uh, structure of the molecule so of course uh, this uh, the perspective over here is in the chromatography we do uh, the separation and we are only focusing to a particular class of compounds for example if i am searching for some alkaloid i use a specific mobile phase which will be targeting my alkaloid and only alkaloids will be getting in separated and then what we do is we check in with the 2d chromatography if we have any doubt it may be having a, a, a coeluting compound at that point and so it is then easily resolved in by performing a 2d and then once we are confirmed we go in for the uh, proper structure uh, elucidation with the help of mass data ir and nmr so uh, that is the generalized approach so hyphenation gives you a lot uh, more limitations one more hyphenation is the antioxidant of course uh, i don't know how much it will be in uh, this case of forensic application uh, 
Yeah, so, Doctor Shaker, let's uh, move on to the next question. One is asked, what is the year in which the uh, Spectrum Library is updated? So, we have two libraries. One is in that scientific paper which are published, which is published uh, last year, 2019. And then there is another one which is older than that. I'm not sure how old it is, but it is quite older. So, 2019 is the date you can see for which we have the latest. Uh, that library has the latest uh, uh, Spectra. Then the next uh, question that has come in is that uh, for the petrol application which I showed for arson, generally it is done on GCFID, which is absolutely the case. But HPTLC can also do this for sure. We will share the application note with you who is interested in that. One question came in, which forensic lab in the country has this TLC MS? So the uh, Delhi FSL lab in uh, Rohini has this unit, the entire complete CAMAC system with, with the Shimadzu MS, which we have supplied. Then the other labs which are coming up now are going for this. We have supplied a uh, total of four TLC MS units to the Central Revenue Control Lab, which is also putting them at various airports and so on for smuggling. So these are all forensic applications almost. Then the Maharashtra FDA lab in Mumbai also has this full CAMAC system with TLC MS. And just last year we have supplied six TLC units, HP TLC units, not MS, to all the labs of uh, Andhra state in uh, one single uh, uh, shot because they felt that it was so necessary for the forensic uh, work. Then there is another question. Uh, what are the various applications of HPTLC in forensic toxicology? Uh, I think I've covered that, but if you wish to have more information. Can you send them uh, the application yeah. note, right? Yeah, and the and uh, one question asked is, how effective is the novel psychoactive substances which are uh, prepared in clandestine laboratories? Now, this is a very good question. Now, this is actually a cat and mouse game between the uh, the narcotics people and the uh, authorities. You know, they come up with new drugs all the time. Which these are called designer drugs or synthetic drugs. And somebody has to sit and do the analysis of this once. Of course, with the unknown, our machine cannot do anything until we know what it is. So we have to spend time to figure out what it is. But once that comes, becomes part of our system, it becomes part of the Spectrum library, then we can do that, you know, unlimited times. Uh, I think I've covered most of the questions. Uh, yes, sir. so I think you have covered more. So for the for concluding the session, I invite Abdul Rasak, sir. So please. Thank you. Thank you, Achai. Thank you, sir. For a nice presentation. Uh, it was very good and fantastic. I think I, I would like to make you some remark, two remarks. That means it's a positive remark that uh, uh, with the presentation, throughout the presentation, uh, your, that means uh, the questions that are addressed, sorry, that are uh, posed by the uh, participants so that have been addressed by your colleagues itself. And that's why it's very, very good. It's very good. And uh, and uh, that means uh, next, uh, next one it is. Uh, throughout the presentation, uh, that means uh, I think the participants have felt that uh, they are they are, they are, they, have, they have been in the laboratory. I think <laughs> that means uh, the virtual DLC uh, plate, DLC chromatograms uh, they have seen. Uh, that means uh, that means it is a virtual class. I think that means very good, uh, very good, and thank you. And now uh, I think uh, that means uh, oh, now seeing in the participant list, uh, I just I I am very pleased. Uh, by some of my colleagues uh, been here, uh, but that means they are they are contributing to this one. Um, uh, sir Jayakumar sir and Ranjit sir and uh, one of my colleague, former colleague Divya Prabha uh, from Toronto, uh, been here and a big hi to them. Not to more, more directly to them all. That means a big hi to, to all. And I, I think uh, Shiva, any, any question? No, sir. We can uh, we can conclude, sir. Uh, no okay. problem. Okay. Uh, okay. We have arrived at the conclusion, and that means uh, uh, this. I would like to thank the speaker uh, from uh, the Kangrom, Achai, and your colleagues also. And the mic. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Again, that means uh, let's conclude here. Thank you.
Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Achay. Yes, uh, Magna, continue. Uh, thank you so much, Rasak sir and Akshay sir. Well, once again, on behalf of Indian Film Knowledge and Forensic Science Association, I would like to thank the speaker of the session, Mr. Akshay, and the presiding speaker, Abdul Rasak sir. And also, I thank the officers of Forensic Science Laboratory and Chemical Examiner's Laboratory. And a special thanks to the team of Ankrom who gave support throughout the session. So thank you so much. And uh, to all the participants, please mention your full name and email ID in the chat box for receiving the certificates. You will be receiving email in this regard in a week. So if you mention your name and email ID, kindly leave the chat. I request all the participants to mention your full name and email ID and leave the chat. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.